This is part 89 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss remote validation in MVC. Sometimes to check if a field value is valid, we may need to make a database call. A classic example of this is the user registration page that you can see here. To register a user, we need to ensure that the provided username is unique. So to check if the username is not taken already, we have to make a call to the server and then check the respective database table. There's something called remote attribute that's extremely useful in situations like this. Let's understand using this attribute with an example. We'll be using this table TBL users for this demo. I'll have the SQL script available on my blog in case if you need it. The first step here is to add an ADU.NET entity data model based on this table TBL users. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's right click on the models folder, add a new item, select data, ADU.NET Entity Data Model and let's name this Sample Data Model and we want to generate the model from the database and we want the connection string to be saved as sample db context within the web.config file so this is going to connect to the database and retrieve all the views, tables and stood procedures. Let's expand tables, select TBL users table and we want our models to live in models namespace. Click finish. So this should generate an entity with name TBL user. But let's change that to user. Let's save the changes and let's build our solution so that this user entity class is compiled. The next step is to add a controller. And let's call it home controller. And let's use this scaffolding template, MVC controller with read slash write actions and views using entity framework. And our model class is going to be the user entity class that we have just generated. And the data context class is going to be sample DB context. Click add. So this should generate the home controller and all the respective views. Let's navigate to this create view. And let's get rid of the script section, otherwise we would get a compiler error. Let's run the application. Now at the moment, we don't have any users within this table, TBL users. So when this index view renders, there will be no users on this view. Okay. Now let's create a new user. Let's try creating a user with test as the full name, test as the username, and test as the password click create. So this is fine. We don't have any user with that username test. So this record is created fine. But let me create another user with the same username. And let's see. Look at that. It allows me. So we are having now usernames, you know, basically duplicated usernames. That's what we want to prevent. And let's see how to achieve that using remote attribute. So let's flip to Visual Studio. The first step here is to add a method to our controller which is going to perform the validation for us. So this method is going to return true or false. If the method returns true, then the validation has succeeded. If it returns false, then the validation has failed. So the return type here is going to be boolean. And let's call this method is username available. And we are going to pass a parameter to this function username. So we are going to use link extension method any here. Okay. So here we have an instance of our sample db context class. So this object has got users property which is going to list all the users that are present within the database. So within that list, you know, I'm going to check, you know, if there is any user with the provided username. If that's the case, then we don't want to allow the um, user to be created. Okay, so basically the validation should fail. So if you look at this any link extension method, it's going to return a boolean, true or false. Okay, so this method returns true if a match is found, otherwise it's going to return false. Okay, so let's say user such that user dot username equal to whatever username that we are passing into this function. So if there is a match, this function will return true, otherwise it's going to return false. Okay, so if there is a match, that means the username is already existing, in which case we don't want to 
um, you know allow the user to be created meaning the validation should fail okay so we should return false in that case if the validation has to fail okay that's why we are going to negate whatever this function is going to return so return that value okay so a very simple method um, you know it this method should return true if we want the validation to be succeeded otherwise it should return false okay now the validation is done on the client side okay so we need to return JSON result back instead of boolean so let's change the return type to JSON result and to return JSON result from a controller action method we can use JSON function okay so we are passing true or false to this method JSON method it's going to wrap that inside a JSON result object and then return it okay and then there's another parameter that we need to specify uh, JSON request behavior that is going to be allow get because this um, a request to this method will be issued as a get request okay so this is the method which is responsible for performing the validation now we need to hook up this method with the username property of the user class and if you look at this auto generated file that we have within this auto generated file we have our user class and this class has got all the properties ID full name username etc okay now it's not a good practice to make any changes to this auto generated file because if this file were to auto generate again we would lose all our changes so let's add another user class since this class is generated as a partial class we can add another partial user class so let's right click on the models folder and let's add a class let's call this user.cs and this is going to be a partial class I'm going to add another class here and let's call this maybe user metadata and this class is going to contain the metadata for our user okay so somehow we need to link these two classes and to link them I'm going to use metadata type attribute and that type attribute is present in system dot component model dot data annotations namespace so let's decorate this with metadata type attribute and then specify the type which contains the metadata for this class so this user metadata class contains the metadata for user class all right and then let's specify the property here public string what is the name of the property username this is what we want to validate all right so we're going to decorate this property with a remote attribute and again this remote attribute is present in system.web.mvc namespace so let's go ahead and bring that in and let's specify the remote attribute here so here we will specify the name of the method which is going to do the validation for us and it is this method is username available so we're going to pass that and the next parameter is the name of the controller which contains that method and the controller which contains this method is the home controller and that's what we are passing here and we can also specify the error message that we want to be displayed in case if the validation has failed so let's say uh, the validation error message is username already in use okay so we are done so let's build our solution the next step is for this validation to work we need to reference some script files so let's go to our create view so we need three script files we need jquery itself we need jquery.validate and jquery.validate.unobtrusio so let's drag and drop these script files onto this view and then let's also drag and drop the CSS file so within content there's site.css so let's drag and drop that as well 
and let's change the syntax to use tilde character all right so let's build our solution and let's navigate to the create view look at that full name test username test and look at this the moment I tab away we get that validation error username already in use okay on the other hand if I try test one look at that the validation goes away and then once I click create we should be able to create a user with that username test one okay now for this validation to work make sure within this function you know this parameter username the name of the parameter must match with the name of the field on the create view so here the name of the parameter is username and then if you look at the create view the field that you see here you know this username field the input field has got the same name username if you misspell it so within home controller if you misspell it something like username one maybe you know the default model bind in ASP.NET MVC will not bind the field value with this parameter and hence the validation will not work as expected all right so obviously for the validation to work you need to reference these script files jquery jquery.validate jquery.validate.unobtrusive and we also need to make sure that both client validation and unobtrusive javascript are enabled that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day